This is the War Boy. Named for its inspiration, vintage military ammo bags. Made from DIY recycled plastic sheets, it's turned out to be spectacularly useful. But lived a hard life, and some basic mistakes on my part mean that currently it's in a very sorry state. I'm going to pull it apart and put it back together better than before. I start by carefully deconstructing the bag. The strap was always the best bit and can be reused as is. The seams where I use binding are much stronger, so I plan to use more of it this time. Originally there was a jacket carry, but it broke. I'm abandoning that idea this time around. The inside pouch is great, but the visible stitching on the back always annoyed me, so I have an idea to fix that. The top needs repaired and strengthened. The CBD pouch has held up pretty well and can go back in as is. I'll replace this raggedy fabric with a brand new zip assembly made from the plastic. And the sides just need the same repairs as the top. This plastic material is fabulous to repair. Sandwich it between two sheets of baking paper and apply heat. This will soften the plastic and fuse it together. Most importantly, it melts the perforations from the original seam back together, so it can be sewn again without weakening the material. I add some extra plastic to reinforce the areas that had pulled apart, then heat again and allow it to cool under weight. This makes the final sheet smooth and flat. Got plastic bags? An iron? Then you can make your own fabric. Click the link to find out more. I've made myself a fresh sheet of plastic in matching colours to make two additional zip assemblies. The first is for the back of the bag. To add an additional external pocket, and hide the sewing joining the internal pouch. I rough cut two panels to size and mark the length of zip I want for the back. I bring in this third panel of plastic that I have cut to the same width as the zip. With the plastic and the zip right sides together, I sew the plastic in place. I hand turn the needle over the zip, making sure the needle passes between the teeth. I flip the plastic back, finger press into position and top stitch. I'm sewing loose here, but for the next part I measure to make sure I don't cut off too much of the excess plastic. I'm going to do the same thing again, but this time I have to bring the zipper pull into the middle of the track and hold the open ends together while I sew. The downside with this material is that you can't use pins in the same way that you can't pin leather. You can't undo the holes the pins make. But honestly, I don't think you need them for this. I now have a zip track with sealed ends and I can trim off the excess track. To finish the panel, I bring in one of the larger sheets. Right sides together, raw edges lined up, I sew in place. Flip the plastic over and top stitch down. You have to make sure the zip stays in position because the plastic wants to lay flat until it's top stitched. It's the same process for the other side, but I stop to make sure the fold is even with the other side before top stitching. 
I'll assemble the back panel in a second, I just want to show you the difference with the other zip assembly. It's the same process, but I'm doing the sides first. And I break a needle on the teeth and snap my scalpel, cutting it to size. Hey, this is a replica M16 machine gun that I made for that flashback sequence. I don't feel great about having this in my home, so I'm putting it up for sale on the Kofi page. I also have a bunch of these zines that nobody bought, so please visit kofi.com forward slash unpicker and support the channel. We are getting close to an ending now. I use the original back panel as the pattern to cut the new one. I add this beautiful binding to the internal pocket and sew it in place. I line up the internal panel with the new back and this time I do need something to hold all this together. I don't use clips, so go with washi tape and sew around all four edges to join. Once I have trimmed back the frayed edges, I have all the parts ready for final assembly. I've seen horrors. Horrors that you've never seen. You have no right to call me Chuggy. You have the right to downvote. You have the right to do that, but you have no right to judge me. I remember when my last video failed. It it wasn't because it was bad, it was because of you. You wouldn't comment, like or subscribe. And I realised very quickly, it didn't matter. Nothing would stop me from making these weird film references that nobody asked for. This is a sewing channel only in part. I'll fully commit to this bit because it's doubt that defeats us. I'm not going to cover this in detail. The original film does that very well, but I will point out that I did some things differently. The top, main zip assembly and sides were all joined as one piece before inserting the CBD pouch. The strap was attached to the back with multiple runs of zigzag stitch first. Then the two halves were closed up and every raw edge got binding, which has improved the overall quality of the bag drastically. And once I had struggled to open the main zip and turn the bag out, this is the finished item. I still love adjusting the strap. So did you notice the mistake? I put the strap on the wrong way around. It used to be that it went on the, the right shoulder and I could dip in and dip out. But now it's on the left, I have to reach around the strap and in. It's not the end of the world. I'll fix it in Warboy 3. The other thing is that I also put the strap on backwards. It's supposed to be like that but it's not. But that's an easy fix. In fact, I don't have my unpicker, so let's use this extremely sharp scalpel. Otherwise, uh, this all went pretty well. The bag is in much better condition and I'm very, very happy about it. So, on to other business. I'm working on a t-shirt. Oh, Jesus, I do really have to pay attention here. Yeah, I'm working on a t-shirt and it's going to take a bit of time because I've made it unnecessarily complex. And the, the varsity jacket I was wearing in the hero shots. I've got some plans to make some modifications to that. So that will be a film too. I don't know if it's next on the list. It might have to drop down for Halloween, but we'll see. Otherwise, thank you very much for getting this far into the video. I did not make that easy for you. Hope you enjoyed all of my indulgent war film references. Oh, and, and by the by, I'm not a poser. I was at that skate park for genuine reasons. I'm trying to relearn my ollies because that's what you do when you're full-blown midlife crisis. So for all those skateboarders out there that prefer their skate clips unedited and raw, here's a 15 second love letter to you.